Hi, and welcome to Ask Susanna, where I answer your most pressing baby sleep concerns. Today's topic is moving your toddler from a crib to a big kid bed. How do you do it and when do you do it? Typically speaking, I wouldn't advise anyone to move their baby into a bed until at least three years old. The reason being that until about three, kids do not have the neurological capacity to moderate their own behavior and consistently abide by the rules of the family. They may be compliant most of the time if you have a particularly rules-oriented child, but even kids like those have little impulse control before the age of three. There is no hard and fast rule that you should do things at three. There are no ill effects from keeping your toddler in a crib until four, and you may avoid a number of nighttime behavioral problems by doing so. But I strongly advise against making the move before three, even if your toddler has been uh, climbing out of the crib anyways. And here's why. If your toddler is climbing out of the crib, this is a behavioral issue that will be exacerbated by removing the physical boundaries of the crib. The walls of your toddler's crib are the physical manifestation of the rules and boundaries that you institute as a parent. Rules and boundaries must be in place in your home for your child to feel secure and establish and maintain good nighttime sleep. If your kid is climbing the crib in the night, she is disregarding your boundaries, and that is a signal that you should be doing some parental reflection. By removing the crib altogether, you're essentially saying, Yes, you have no boundaries at night. And this will exacerbate the problem and potentially create more boundary related problems as well. A better course of action is to examine what boundaries you have in place for your toddler already. All the boundaries, day, night, home, at the playground, everywhere. And see what you can do to strengthen those as well. Everything is connected. A toddler whose parent is loose or a parent's parent is loose with boundaries in the daytime will assume that those boundaries are loose at night as well. You must build credibility as a leader with your child so that when you tell her you must stay in your crib at night, she listens just as she listens to your boundaries in the daytime. You may also consider adding a crib tent to cover the top as an additional physical representation of your set boundaries. I've included some resources for working on boundary setting with toddlers in the video's description. So check those out if this uh, applies to you. If you're really concerned about the safety hazard of falling out of the crib, and it's not unheard of for toddlers to get hurt when doing this, this might further sway you to move to a bed uh, in early. But before you do so, consider how you may soften the landing with a cushion or a soft rug. If you go this route, be sure that you aren't inadvertently encouraging your child's escapades. Try to dissociate the act of introducing the soft landing from your child's act of escape. So put it in because it's just kind of neat. Oh, it's neat or because it feels really soft on your feet. I'm not a proponent of lying to your child, but keep in mind that you are dealing with an immature person with very little impulse control. There's no need to give him any ideas. Again, the best course of action if, if your under three toddler is climbing out of the crib is installing firm boundaries throughout the day and consistently reinforcing the rule that he stay in his crib for his sleeps. If you are moving your toddler into a big kid bed because you have a new baby on the way, do it ahead of time, ahead of the baby's arrival, and in a way that does not give your child the sense that she's being shunted out of the room to make room for the baby or shunted out of the crib to make room for the baby. Turn it into a rite of passage, a big kid thing. And with big kid things come big kid responsibilities. Responsibilities like staying in her room until it's morning time, just as she was meant to stay in her crib. This is her room and it's her bed. So let her take ownership of the process and the new arrangements so that she's inspired to take things seriously. Be sure the bed is appropriate for a toddler, low enough to the ground so that if she does fall out, it doesn't hurt or with a little bumper to prevent that. Uh, even the most compliant, well-behaved and responsible little kid will want to explore her room 
and even the whole house with this newfound freedom. It's unrealistic to expect this not to happen, especially the room part. It is, after all, her room, so shouldn't she be able to explore it? With that in mind, be sure to comb through the room from her perspective to ensure that it is safe. It is a safe place for her to be unattended for long periods of time. If you suspect that she'll want to explore the rest of the house while you're sleeping, and this is to be expected, you may want to put a gate up at her doorway or use some other physical representation of your set boundaries to keep her in her room. If and when your kid breaks these rules, have a plan as to how you will respond. What will you do if he visits you in the night? What will you do if he tears apart the kitchen? What will you do if he crawls into the dog bed and spends the night in there? What will you do if instead of his new bed, he opts for sleeping on the cozy snuggle chair that you've got in his room? A good course of action is to, first of all, be crystal clear about your expectations and the new rules. Ask him to articulate the rules back to you when you ask in the daytime as part of this preparation. If he is unable to articulate the rules or is unable to communicate them in whatever system that you've got for communication, then consider that he may be too young for the switch. When he breaks those rules in the night, remind him once or twice of the rules, but don't dwell on them. Keep your response limited, firm, and gentle, and most importantly of all, consistent. One thing though, is it's a far easier and more realistic rule to stay to say stay in your room all night than stay in your bed if you find him sleeping somewhere in his room that is not his bed ask him if there is something about his bed that he would like changed or if it's uncomfortable or scary somehow and make the necessary changes and then encourage him to return to the bed but don't push it it's no big deal he'll go there eventually and as with potty training, pushing him can backfire. So tread lightly and pick your battles. Your toddler is bound to probe his newfound freedom, so be prepared for this. If you're making the switch because there's some sleep problem that you're hoping to resolve, don't do it. There's no sleep problem that can be resolved by more freedom. Quite the opposite, in fact. More likely, the problem will be, will be resolved with uh, greater restrictions, with deliberate opportunities for autonomy, and with a consistent reinforcement of boundaries. Finally, if you've made the switch prematurely and it's blowing up in your face, then there's no shame in going back to the crib, as long as you don't make it shameful. Don't blame your child or say that he's blown it in some way. Admit that you made a mistake. Explain that you're super excited for the day, but it's not today. Acknowledge any upset this causes and help your kid work these feelings out and then set the crib back up until a better time. Keep it fun, make it meaningful, support it with consistent boundaries all day long and consider how you can reinforce the most important boundaries, the ones dealing with his physical well-being, with physical boundaries. Good luck.